Hey, friends all over the world. I want to tell you the shocking truth behind the Grammys and satanic rituals. Listen, I wasn't even going to make this video. Actually, I made a video a couple of days ago and I mentioned this a little bit, but today when I woke up, I was speaking with my wife and she said, Keenan, are you going to address this? And I said, well, I think I need to. I think I think I need to. I think God's put it on my heart to talk about this, this thing because there's a lot of people who are deceived and they are being manipulated. What we've done in our modern culture is that we have convinced people that Satanism, witchcraft, demonism, is actually entertainment. I mean, what what more diabolical means to seduce people into something, but then to convince them that it's not really that serious. No, it's just entertainment, it was just a show. During this Grammy performance, Sam Smith literally had a satanic ritual for his song, Unholy. Unholy, and he talks about just a deviant, narrative I mean I don't know the words of the song but just from what I've heard about it and I'm telling you friends what you're seeing today you are seeing really when you think about it you are seeing the emboldening of evil when when you see this anytime you see stuff like this where where things become on public display like this whether it's uh, occultism, Satanism, Illuminati stuff. Whenever you see this, this is a sign. It's a sign. What, what are the Grammys? The Grammys are the most venerated awards for music and arts and entertainment in the world. It's what every, it's what every singer, songwriter, producer aspires to is what every singer, songwriter, and producer aspires to, to one day win a Grammy. The Grammy is like the pentacle of music achievement and at the most watched music ceremony in the world, the most watched ceremony in the entire world, the whole world is watching. There are gospel artists there, there are R&B singers, rappers, various people at the most watched ceremony in the world. It was on full black, a multi-million dollar production of pure Satanism. A multi-million dollar production of Sodom and Gomorrah right before the eyes of every single viewer, every single music fan in the world. You see? And I didn't even watch it, to be honest with you. I didn't watch it. I never watch it. I never watch the Grammys. I'm not even interested in the Grammys. But what I'm saying is from all that I saw, all the reports, all these things, see clearly that Satanism is on full blast. They're not even afraid anymore to show you who they are. Before, it was hidden through subliminal messages. It was hidden through all kinds of, you know, underlying themes and symbolisms now they don't even care to hide it there is no fear to hide their agenda there's no fear they don't even care they're not trying to they're not trying to they're not trying to to hide it anymore they're doing it blatantly and that speaks to where we are in society in the culture because whenever the devil gets on full display like that it means that there's been a shift. There's been a shift. We have, there's a shift. Whenever the powers of darkness become that bold and that brazen, that means that there's been a shift. That means something has shifted. What has shifted? That means that this is a war. That's what that means. That means that we are in a war, a spiritual battle between good and evil, between light and darkness. This means that we can no longer sit on the sidelines and pretend that evil doesn't exist. 
That's what's been happening. The, 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 the church world has said, even people say to me, they'll say, why are you even making these videos? Who cares about this? Just talk about sermons. Just talk about, you know, Bible study. Just talk about Jesus. And that's all that matters. You know what? No. No, because that's not what Paul the Apostle did. That's not what Peter did. They addressed the culture of their day. They addressed the evils of their day. They addressed the wickedness of their day. Paul talks about the prince of the power of the air. And he addressed this thing. And this is a spiritual battle. And this is why every major war in the earth, when we talk about like a political or geopolitical war, every major war in the earth is preceded by a spiritual war in the heavenly realms. And that's what I talked about with this whole issue with China and all these things happening. You see what happened, 11,000 dead in Turkey and Syria. You look at all these things that are happening. This is a war, it's a spiritual battle between light and darkness. And the enemy is hoping, he's praying, he's betting on the church being silent, on the church being complacent, on preachers not saying anything, not teaching on this. You know why? You know why he, 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 he knows that a lot of preachers won't teach on it because a lot of preachers were at the Grammys or watch the Grammys or have these artists like Sam Smith and Beyonce on their playlist. Yeah, preachers are, are going, worship leaders are going to Las Vegas to watch Usher in concert and Beyonce in concert. And, and, and that, that, that's the, we celebrate and praise this stuff. And no, I'm not trying to judge anybody or condemn anyone, but I'm telling you, they're showing you what they are. There is no more question about who they are and what they're doing anymore. See, before we could use this whole ignorance thing, ignorance is bliss. Well, well, that just because, you know what I mean? Just because they're doing that doesn't mean they're necessarily Satanists. Just because Beyonce did a, a song called Church Girl, where she was blaspheming God to a gospel song in the background, doesn't mean she's a Satanist. It doesn't mean that. But now they're telling you, no, this is who we are. They're do and the they're doing this because it is a strategic move from Satan. It is him showing you, listen, I want you to know. I want you to know who I am and what my agenda is. And anytime the enemy comes out from the shadows and he comes into the open sight, the open viewership of people, he is literally saying, I'm waging war against you. And so the issue now is, what are we going to do? Are we going to continue to be ignorant? Are we going to continue to pretend to be oblivious to what's going on? Are we going to continue to make excuses for the wickedness? Or are we going to recognize that, no, evil is real in this world? What they are doing to children, what they are doing to women, what they are doing in the society, the kind of poison they are infusing into the culture is not even fathomable. It's beyond comprehension what these people who are under the influence of satanic powers are doing. And if you think I'm just trying to make a sensational video or trying to scare you or trying to do something for views or likes, you are greatly mistaken. This is not about views and likes. This is about the truth. And the truth is, is that Satanism is being funded at the highest levels of art, entertainment, and culture. I'm going to say that one more time. Satanism is being funded at the highest levels of art, entertainment, and culture. And now we need to make a decision as a church as to what we're going to do. Are we going to continue to pretend that we can live amicably with evil? Are we going to continue to pretend that we can have a copacetic relationship with Satan? That we're just going to go to church on Sundays and, and, and play our little tambourines and have our little smoke machines blowing and, and have the little worship band up there. We can continue to wear our skinny jeans, nothing wrong with skinny jeans, and just, and just go on about our business with our great brew cup of coffee and have a wonderful worship service. Or are we going to recognize that the enemy is literally calling us on the carpet? He is literally, it's like the bully on the yard. But what I found out about bullies is that until you confront them, they just get bolder and bolder and bolder. They get more and more violent, more and more aggressive, more and more aggressive. 
And that's what we've been doing. We've been trying to pretend like the bully doesn't exist. Like he's not on the schoolyard taking people's lunches and taking people's milk and taking people's, come on somebody, book bags and taking their, uh, and, and intimidating and, and bullying. We're pretending like the devil is not wreaking havoc in the culture. Yes, I'm a man of faith. I believe in the power of God. I believe that we already have the victory, but I also believe in confronting evil. We must no longer sit on the sidelines and watch evil have a carnival. When we pretend, you know what? It's not all that serious. Pastors, eh, it's not all that serious. And yes, they're sinners. And yes, these people don't know God, and that's why they're doing what they're doing. And we pray for their salvation. I'm not talking about the people themselves. I'm talking about the spirits operating through them. That's what we need to confront. We need to confront the demonic powers that are operating through these people. When Jesus walked into a room, the demons screamed and they hollered. What makes demons in our culture so bold that they would get on full display and, and, and have such veracity to show their agenda so openly and so plainly? It means that there is somewhere and somehow in the culture where there has been agreement. <laughs> There is somewhere where, where the church and church people and God's people have come into agreement with evil. Evil would not be so bold without agreement. Evil would not be so bold if it didn't have our agreement, if it didn't have our stamp of approval. I believe that with all my heart. I don't believe that the devil would be this blatant and this brazen if he didn't have the agreement of the church. What can we do? What should we do? Number one, we should make sure that we are not cooperating with evil. We should make sure that we are not entertained by evil. We should make sure that evil is not in our repertoire. And if it is, we need to repent and rid ourselves of it. They literally did a satanic ritual on the stage on the stage on international television live horns and all passing out demon horns all throughout the Grammy ceremonies and it wasn't just Sam Smith there was all kinds of wickedness and undertones all kinds of diabolical innuendos We need to recognize that the devil is calling us. He's saying, what y'all going to do? What you going to do? I'm going to do it in your face. And he's threatening the church, saying, you ain't going to do nothing. You know why? Because we have a culture of non-confrontation. We have a culture of conformatism. Yeah, we want to conform to the world. We want to look like the world, act like the world, talk like the world, speak like the world, function like the world. And because we function and thought and acted and spoken like the world, the world believes that they have the legal grounds to do what they want to do. No, 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 no. No, we can't just sit back and let the devil urinate on the culture. No, 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 sir. No, sir. No, no, no. We, we're not going to sit back and be quiet. No, God's raising up a generation of preachers who will confront the wickedness. No, 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 no. He's raising, he's raising up a generation of preachers that will say, no, we are not going to sit by and we're not going to sit by and be amicable with darkness. We're not going to participate with the darkness. We're not going to be coerced by the darkness, but we're going to stand up against him. We're going to stand between the devil and the culture. Can I have just a few thousand people who will say I will stand against the satanic agenda to totally demonize a culture. And you may say, well, that's just the Grammys and nothing to do with the church. Listen, let me tell you something. Your children are watching it. And even if they're not watching it, they could be the most secluded Christian schools. Culture has a way of infecting and influencing even the remotest of children. Children that are so insulated and so isolated from the world, they can still have access to the internet. They can still go on TikTok. They can still go on Twitter. And you hear the songs in the background. You hear the songs on TikTok. Even if the children don't have them on their playlist, they're being exposed because the devil is the prince of the power of the air. 
So you can sit up here and say, well, that doesn't have anything to do with me and my children because we go to church every Sunday and we don't listen to any secular music in my home. <clears throat> well, guess what? When they go to Walmart, the secular music playing over the intercom. When, you, when you're driving in the car, people are blasting secular music out of their windows. Yeah. And to those of you, maybe you say, I'm not a Christian, so it doesn't have anything to do with me. You may not be a Christian, but I would pray that you would see who the devil really is. He's showing you who he is and what he means. And I'm telling you, you better come out of that darkness. These are not just songs. These are not just R&B singers. These people are agents of Satan to propagate his agenda in the culture. And the reason they can do it is because we keep buying their CDs, we keep listening to their music, we keep downloading and streaming their songs. Come on, let's talk about it. We keep playing it, we keep entertaining it, we keep listening to it, we keep, we keep it on repeat, we keep watching the YouTube videos, we keep watching these shows. We keep doing it, and we keep doing it, and we keep doing it, no matter how disrespectful they are. No matter how blasphemous they are, no matter how godless they are, we keep giving them quarter. We keep abiding these people and their agendas. And until we recognize that we have a responsibility to stand as light against the darkness and to say, you will not pass. You will not pass. You're not going to get past me. You're not going to get past me. You're not going to get past my bloodline until we have a generation of bold believers with a holy boldness from God. And that requires that we search our hearts. That requires that we repent. That requires that we make sure there's not errors in our life where we have cooperated with the devil and his demons. That requires some self introspection and some humility so that we can get to a place where we recognize, you know what, God, you've called me and you've left me on this planet earth, not just so that I can wait till Jesus cracks the sky but you left me to occupy till you come. Meaning, I'm supposed to be a steward of the light, a steward of the truth, a steward of the power and presence of God, and I'm supposed to affect and infect the culture. Jesus left us here on planet Earth so that we would be in the world, but not of the world, so that we would make a difference. And I just challenge every one of you to be a difference maker. Stand for your children. Stand for your children, stand for the culture. Yes, this may not be your forte. You may want to just talk about hermeneutics and homiletics and, and all that kind of stuff and, and biblical grammar and, and eschatology and all this kind of stuff. We can have these debates. Pastors are debating each other, attacking each other, you know, examining each other, criticizing each other. Well, because that's our job. We're not supposed to worry about the world. We're supposed to worry about the church and other believers. And so we built ministries that attack each other and talk down on each other and do video posts about each other. But we're not, we're not attacking the darkness, though. We're not confronting the evil that's right in front of us. I submit to you that, that there's a time now where God is calling us on the center stage. They have drawn their line in the sand. They've made their position known. It's time for us to make our position known. They've called us out onto the field after school, the big bully saying, hey, <clears throat> Meet me outside at 3 o'clock. Are we going to run with our tail tucked between our legs? Or are we going to confront the devil with the power of heaven behind us? Please share this video and remember Jesus is Lord.